Hello, in this section of the tutorial on the TI-84 calculator, we're going to go back into the math menu and we're going to continue working our way down through here, down around number six and number seven, uh, F-min and F-max. Now these are two things that are useful in some instances that you might need uh, to use, but in all honesty, once you know how to graph equations on this calculator, which I'm going to sort of introduce you to in this section as well, um, it isn't quite as important to use these functions, but occasionally they might prove useful. So let me just go ahead and, and show you how to use them. Fmin is a built-in function to this calculator that tries to calculate where the minimum value of a function is. So if you can look at my little mouse cursor here, let's pretend your function is a parabola like this. It's going, it's going down and then it's going back up. Well, way here in the middle, you know, at the middle down here, this would be called a minimum of this function. And so wherever this is on the graph, this function is going to tell you the x value of wherever your function is a minimum. And uh, it's, it's just telling you, it's not telling you what the minimum value is, it's just telling you where along the x axis here is the minimum value of your function. And so the way you do that is, you go down to number six here, or you could press the number six button. Let's go ahead and do that since I passed it up. We'll just press number six. And on the uh, calculator screen says fmin. So what you first need to do is type in the function that, you, uh, that you're trying to find a minimum of. So let's say we're going to type in x. And remember, this is the button for x because the first variable here is x. So x, and we're going to make it x squared because I think everybody watching this probably knows that x squared goes down and then it goes right back up again. It's a parabola. It goes down and back up. So there should be a minimum value right here in the center of the screen. So you have to put your function in first, and then you put a comma, and then you have to put the variable that you're searching along, which is x. So this is always basically going to match, basically match the variable that you used here. So you're searching along x, which is left and right, and you need to tell it, you need to tell the calculator what interval you want to search on for this. It can't search forever and ever. It would just take the calculator forever to do that. So you have to nail it down and tell it where you want to search from. So let's say we want to search from negative two comma to positive two. So you see what we've typed in here. We've said, okay, Mr. Calculator, calculate the, uh, the, the place where this function is a minimum. The function is x squared. The variable we're searching along is x, which is left and right, you know, along the x-axis, from x is equal to negative two and to x is equal to positive two. And so go and figure that out. So you hit the button. And it's going to give you a weird looking answer, 1.07 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, and that's a really, really small number. That's, you know, many zeros and then you've got some numbers. What you have to realize with calculators is they're not perfect. There's a little computer in here and so it's only able to do calculations to a certain accuracy. So when you get a number this small, basically it's telling you this number is, is almost like zero. To the, from the point of view of this calculator. And for those of you that know what this function is, it's a parabola that's centered around x is equal to zero, and you would expect the x value to be zero, uh, where you would find, uh, where you would find this, uh, the minimum value uh, of this function. So to show you that, to prove you that, let's go ahead and graph it. We're, now keep in mind, we're going to do entire sections on graphing later, so don't stress out about it too much if you don't follow. But I want to show you basically how to graph a function so you can get your feet well, because it's very simple. First, you click the Y equals button here, because you have to set your function up here. And I'm going to delete this just to show you we're going to start from scratch. Let's put in the same function that we had, X squared. So you have to define the function that you want. Now, you can put in seven different functions and graph them all at the same time, but we're just going to put X squared. So we're going to hit Enter. And it's going to default to... Um, uh, well, actually, you don't hit enter. In order to plot the thing, you have to go over here to the graph button, and that's going to show you the coordinate axis, and it's going to begin to graph the thing. Now, you notice that it picked it picked uh, axis axes for us already. This is a scale of 10, and this is a scale of 10 going this way, and it just sort of picked that as a normal thing. And here's your nice parabola centered around. Now, let's say we want to look really close in here around zero, because remember, the, the function that we just did told us the minimum value of this function looks to be right at x is equal to zero, which is right here. So let's zoom in there. So we're going to click the zoom button. And there's many, many options, but let's click Z box, which is number one. And basically, this is going to let you draw a nice little box wherever you want to go. So you just click the arrow. See my little cursor is moving here. So let's say I want to start my box there. I hit enter and I drag it over to the right a little bit. 
and I'm basically dragging this box is what's happening. I'm going to go down now and I'm dragging that box that's making a nice rectangular region. So I'm happy with that. I want to zoom into this region. I go ahead and hit enter. And there our, our graph zooms in. Now notice this is our function x squared. Now these little values down here, this is just the value of wherever my cursor is. It has nothing to do with my function. But if I hit the trace button, then immediately my cursor jumps and stays on my graph, which is x squared, which is listed right here. And as I go over to the left, the x value is changing and the y value is changing. So basically all of these values that I'm now reading when I'm in the trace mode are the values of my function. In other words, at x is equal to negative 0.4798551, y is then equal to this number, and that's just given by the function I have. So if I go down here, then I can pretty easily convince myself, if I had no idea what this looked like, that the minimum value in this region here is right around x is equal to zero. Now, yeah, it's not exact. That's just because the calculator is just picking values that are just sort of representative. But if I zoom in closer and closer and closer, I'm going to convince myself that the minimum does, does indeed appear at x is equal to zero. And it looks like y is equal to zero also, because this is a very small number. So let me get out of here. But just remember that this function only returns the value of x. It does not tell you what the minimum value of that function is. It only tells you the x location of that minimum. So if you wanted to plug in and get the minimum value, you have to plug in 0 into x squared, which of course equals 0 also. So the, the minimum for this function is also 0. So let's go ahead and pick a, a little bit more complicated graph so you'll get the, the hang of it a little more. Let's say uh, we're going to do f min, and we're going to do the same sort of thing, x squared plus 3. This is my new graph. It looks really similar. I've just added 3 over here. And I'm going to search along x. So I'm going to put that there, which you always basically are always going to do that. And I'm going to search the same sort of, let's do negative 5, comma, 5. So we're going to tell it, okay, look in a window of negative 5 to 5, figure out where this function x squared plus 3 is a minimum, and tell me the location of x where that is. So I'm going to hit enter, and it tells me that the answer is also at basically 0, because the, uh, the function is so similar. So the answer is basically at 0. Now let's go over here and plot that one. So let's go x squared, and instead of that, let's go x squared plus 3. And let's go ahead and hit graph. Now in this case, uh, it defaulted back to what we were using before. So let's go into the window button, which is basically telling us our, uh, our axis here. And let's go from, let's clear this, and let's go from negative 5 along x to 5. And let's change y back from, let's go negative 10 to 10. This is just setting up our axis here. And we're going to go over these, you know, in future future classes also. But basically you're defining, okay, x is from negative 5 to 5, y is from negative 10 to 10. So let's go back to the graph tab. You see the axis has changed and our graph is now up here. The reason it's up here is because this function is different. It's x squared plus 3. So the entire graph is shifted up by 3 units. So if I go back to my zoom, and just kind of take a peek here and go back to, to Z box to draw a box around the area where I want to zoom. And if I go back over here and start my box over here and hit enter and then go over here and then drag it down and then hit enter again, then it's going to redraw the graph and it's going to, to put it really, really tight on there. Now if I hit trace, then my cursor is going to be right on top of it. And you can see now that it got pretty exact because I've zoomed in so tightly. What I've learned here is that the minimum value of this function by graphing it, when I get right here to the minimum value, is that x is equal to 0, which is what the other function basically told us with such a small number. Uh, x is equal to 0, and uh, y is equal to uh, 3. And the reason y is equal to 3 is because if you take the number x is equal to 0, and you plug it into this equation that you have for y and put 0 in here, then y is going to be equal to 3. So you see what I'm saying? The function that we used here in the math menu, it only returns the value of x where the function's a minimum. 
In order to find the value of y, you have to calculate that. And so you can either graph it to calculate it, or you can just take that value of x and plug it into your equation, and you're going to get the corresponding value of y. That's basically what's going on there. Now let's go and do one more quick one here to kind of give you the hang of this. Let's clear this, and let's go back to the math menu. Let's go back down to number 6, f min, and let's put a different function in there. And this time, the function is going to be x cubed. That's what x, this is, x cubed minus 2x plus 5. And I'm going to look along the variable x. I always have to do that. And I'm going to look between the values of negative 5, comma, and positive 5. And so basically I have the function here, which is a lot more complicated polynomial, along x, negative 5 to 5, and let's see what happens. And it tells us that the minimum value of this function occurs at 0 0.816. Now there's a lot of decimals here, but just remember in your head for a second, 0 0.8. At the value of x of 0 0.8, this function should be a minimum. So if I go off to y equals and clear this and put x cubed minus 2x, and I'm going to go plus 5. This is the same exact equation. And if I go over to graph it, you see we're still very tightly zoomed in because we, we just used that, that zoom factor a second ago. One quick way to set it back to normal is just click zoom and then go down to here, zoom standard. That's what Z standard is. Just click number six and that's going to set it back to the standard uh, negative positive 10, negative positive 10. It's going to go back to standard. So you see this function is a little bit more complicated. It's got a nice hump here and it's got a hump here. So if we go and go to, uh, let's zoom in on this guy, to go to Z uh, box, which is what we want to do here. And we'll go ahead and go up a little ways because we're looking for the minimum value, don't forget. So we'll go ahead and hit enter here and we'll drag this guy over here and go down, just kind of look at where this minimum really is. Hit enter, it'll redraw the function and this is the minimum in the range that we told it to look. So we go to the trace and then we just start hunting around. We go down here pretty close to where we think the minimum really looks from the bottom, 0.83 or you know, 0 0.82, 0 0.81. So you got to remember, this is sort of a, a general graph here. So if we zoomed in tighter and tighter and tighter, we would get the exact answer. And remember, the function returned uh, 0 0.82 roughly. If we go back to our graph, we're looking and it's telling us that here at the minimum of the function, x is equal to 0 0.82. The corresponding value of y comes from when you take this value of x and you plug it into your equation. And this is what the graph is doing for you. So that's sort of a basic idea of what is happening uh, in the math menu when you have this guy down here that says f min. Now f max is exactly the same thing. So if we go down here to number 7, and basically it's the same thing. We go, let's just pick the same equation, x cubed. Um, minus 2x plus 5. We're going to look along x and we're going to look along negative 5 to 5. So we have the same equation, same variable, same parameters, but we're now using f max. We should get a different value. And we do. We get negative 0.816. So let's go back to the graph. We have really have the same exact graph. Let's go back out to standard zoom just so we can see where we are. Number 6. It'll redraw the graph. And we see that this maximum is right over here somewhere. So let's go back to zoom. Let's go back to Z box so we can draw our little box. And let's go take a look. So we go up here. We start our box. We go up. We go over to kind of zoom in here. And go ahead and enter. It's going to redraw the graph. We can see our nice maximum value uh, that's appeared here. We hit the trace button to put our cursor on our graph. And at the maximum, roughly, it's negative point. 82, negative 0.81. So it's the same sort of thing. That's the value of x where the function is a maximum. And when you take it and you plug that value into this equation, the corresponding value of y is also given here. So that's a good um, introduction to using uh, these two functions, f min and f max. They're useful, but honestly, because the calculator is so powerful with the graphing, they're really not used all that much because if you really want to go look at what a, what a function is doing for the minimums and the maximums, then you can go here and, and zoom in and take a look. Sometimes it is faster to use this function because it gives you the exact number that you're looking for. You don't have to go in there. You don't have to hit trace. You don't have to zoom in. 
um, and it's giving you the most accurate answer the calculator can. So sometimes it is faster, but a lot of times it's also faster to just take a look at what the function's doing, and that can help as well. I hope you learned something from this lesson. It's another nice little function to put in your bag of tricks. It's a neat thing that this calculator can do. With some practice, I think you guys will get the hang of it.